Hello everyone. Again, Pranav here. Today I'm going to explain hydrogen generator part seven. All other links of the previous parts are given under the description box. Technical insight of rowable transposed bar. Normally, the armature winding of HV generator consists of multiple strands of insulated separately and transposed using rowable transposition in order to suppress losses caused by eddy currents and supporting currents. Calculation of such losses requires the distribution of supporting currents, which differs from strand to strand. The rowable bar structural phenomena allows to increase machine efficiency and consequently energy savings. The stator is wound with double layer windings. The coil close to the air gap is called top coil and the coil for which the position is toward the slot bottom is called bottom coil. Top coil and bottom coil are insulated from each other. The slots are surrounded by saturable iron. A double layer winding is one in which there are two separate coil sides in any one slot. A given coil has one coil side in the upper half of a slot that is in the top layer nearest to the air gap and its return coil side lies in the bottom half of the another slot that is in the bottom layer. There are two types of external flux in the slot region. One is radial flux, the flux which is entering the slot from the air gap and it can produce very high circulating currents in the top coil, especially in the strands that are close to the air gap. Number two, transversal flux. Flux on the bar, which is produced by other bar in the same slot, that is the transversal flux in the top coil, which is produced by the bottom coil. In contrast to the top coil, in the bottom coil, it is the transversal flux that is the main source of producing circulating current. Now, in the slot region, if there is no transposition, then high circulating currents as produced specially by the external radial flux will ultimately lead to the burn up the machine. With the influence of high circulating currents, the magnetic coupling between the top and bottom coils or bars would have become higher than expected. And thus the circulating currents of one bar is likely to impact the circulating currents of the other bar in the same slot. In case of 360 degree transposition in the active part, that is in the slot region, the circulating current at the bar would have become zero. The effect of the transposition in the end region has made to reduce the circulating currents in the bar. So losses of the winding with transposition in the end region are comparatively much less than the windings without transposition in the end region. The minimum circulating current and losses is achieved in case of 360 degree transposition in the slot region together with transposition in the end region. High voltage insulation system. The high voltage hydrogenator stator windings are exposed to a variety of continuous and transient stresses and all having disastrous effect on the long-term durability of the winding. 
The mechanical stresses that act on the winding are caused by electromagnetic forces during the normal operation, as well as the more severe condition of the short circuit on the main leads. Strong and rigid bracing is applied to the end of the winding to restrict movement within the safe boundaries. This application is especially important during transient phenomena such as short circuits and synchronization failure. In general, life expectancy of high voltage winding will depend on thermal degradation of insulation, electrical degradation of insulation, mechanical stresses, and environmental contamination. Most often, the winding degradation occurs as a result of combined stresses and is often referred to as multi-stresses or multi-factor insulation aging. Modern insulation systems use thinner, more homogeneous insulations which withstand higher voltage stresses while providing much improved thermal conductivity and better heat dissipation. Thus, to specify high voltage insulation system, underneath factors are to be considered. One, thermal factor. Two, electrical factor. Three, ambient, that is the environmental factor. Four, mechanical factor. Five, performance related factor, that is, which is intended to duty, mode of operation. Out of which the main aging factor is the thermal aging. Having several switching operation during lifetime of a generator, the winding insulation system would have to be frequently undergone to thermal stresses. The usual demand for ever increasing outputs of high voltage hydropower generators without proportional changes in dimensions or weight has made it necessary to reduce the volume of the insulation. Keeping the concept of power per weight ratio within market-wise sustainability limit, the OEM, that is original equipment manufacturer, has set a new quality of new quality and performance trends standards by continuously upgrading designing and manufacturing resources. And that has consistently delivered to provide high grade insulation system with high dielectric breakdown strength, long term resistance to electrical and thermal stress with low power factor that is 10 delta. And that has resulted to have a machine with thinner ground wall thickness. The insulation in electrical machines is a combination of inorganic fiberglass, tape with mica as a base material, and heat curing synthetic epoxy resins as a bonding material. Epoxy resin was first discovered by Pierre Casten, a Swiss chemist in the year 1938. The epoxy resin can be used in different fields such as electrical, electronics, paints, coating, engineering, and aerospace because it has excellent properties of chemical resistance, mechanical strength, electrical insulation, as well as excellent bonding with various curing substances. Mica is the most significant material in the insulation layer as because of its outstanding dielectric strength and high electrical breakdown voltage. High resistance to corona effect, thermally stable up to 500 degrees centigrade, chemically inert material, and the non-flammable properties. The mica can theoretically 
sustain an electrical field of 140 kb per centimeter. The crystalline structure of mica forms in several layers and these layers can be split or delaminated into thin sheets. The mica layer does not have high mechanical strength and needs a support that ensures its holding. That is holding capacity. However, mica is then mechanically strong in compression, but relatively weak in tension and bending. Fractures or cracks or creepage paths are the most common sources for dielectric failure. Note, the shortest possible path between the two conductive components measured along the surface of the insulation is termed as creepage path. And what is creepage distance? The shortest distance along the surface of a solid insulating material between two conductive parts is represented as creepage distance, which is also sometimes referred to as leakage distance. Mica may be formed into tapes by baking mica, splitting or platelets with glass or polyester tapes, or it may be formed into a paper-like material called mica paper or mica mat. The reconstituted mica layer is bonded to a flexible support such as fiberglass tape or PET tape. PET, that is polyester teddy patholate. Not PET tape. What is PET tapes? PET tapes combined with rubber or acrylic adhesive are available in a wide range of thickness and colors. PET tapes are thin, which offers great tear and puncture resistance. PET tapes are comfortable and conformable with high dielectric strength and ideal for securing phase insulation in a motor or generator end-winding region. Thermal capabilities range from plus 130 degrees centigrade, that is rubber adhesive, to plus F, that is 150 degrees, 55 degrees centigrade acrylic adhesive. The tensile strength for these products is superior. Double coated pet tapes are ideal for securing insulating material as slot liner. Now, synthetic mica is available in market, which appears to be primarily considered in high temperature applications, that is over 1000 degrees centigrade. Such reconstitution may have lost certain properties of the original mica. The mica tape is not able to sustain the theoretically indicated electric field, but it has retained its other important properties. Mica is never be degraded by electrical discharges and not to be affected by any sort of thermal aging. All other elements which are added to the mica are only to help the mica to stay in a situation where its properties can be exploited. Fiberglass is a layer which provides the mechanical properties. The wrapping of copper conductors with mica and fiberglass steps is not enough. The surrounding air must be replaced by another material which should have to be better insulation properties. In addition, this material 
must be in liquid form in its initial state to creep into the into all the voids and solid in its last state to seal the insulation wall this is the reason for which resins such as epoxy resins or polyester resin are used different types of pre impregnated that is resin rich mica tapes are commonly used as ground wall insulation mica tape when is exposed to high temperature its resin content breaks down without impairing the high temperature electrical insulation properties of mica moreover the mica tape generated generates no toxic products a electrical insulation the fiberglass backed mica tape has the property to withstand its dielectric strength which remains to be constant up to 380 degree centigrade dielectric withstand capability is reduced by half at 700 degree centigrade and reaches sustainable electrical field of 5 kb per millimeter towards a temperature of 1000 degree centigrade chemical resistance b fiberglass backed mica tape is resistant to water chemically neutral non toxic and entirely free of halogens its inherent properties remain intact up to a radiation exposure of 109 rad rad means radiation absorbed dose it shows excellent resistance to acids and alkalis to mineral oils and solvents only exposure to sulfuric acid and from which it is to be prevented ground wall insulation system resin rich mica tape with oven glass as carrier material used as ground wall insulation synthetic resin bonded mica tape is equivalent to 2.4 kb per mm consist of small mica flakes that are deposited on fiberglass backing tape once the tape has been wound on the conductors the synthetic resin is cured at elevated temperature and pressure this technique offers the possibility of manufacturing almost void free insulation that can withstand high dielectric stress silicon rubber is also used specially in application that needs to withstand high temperatures silicon rubber can have the electrical property to well withstand partial discharges but it restricts the voltage level to 6 kv silicon rubber can also be used together with mica to increase the voltage level however costs for such an insulating system are higher than for an epoxy system scheme for manufacturing stator winding insulation manufacturing of stator coils or bars for high voltage rotating machines when using inorganic fine mica tape as a base material and heat curing synthetic epoxy resins as a bonding material can provide high dielectric breakdown strength long term resistance to electrical stress and low dielectric loss factor that is tan delta mica tape and resin combination also provide excellent resistance to mechanical and thermal stress at different environmental conditions the stator bar is most often wrapped in half lap with dry mica tape the wrapping tension and amount of overlapping will affect the impregnation process so during machine wrapping 
the set value of these parameters should be maintained as per requirement. The key technological improvement of winding manufacturing process is with the introduction of six axis controlled tapping machine for insulation of bars and coils. Tapping machine wraps the fine mica tip with consistent overlap and tension around the bars or coils at the slot and end-winding portions, thus ensuring uniform thickness over the full length of the bar or coil, including the knuckle of the coil. Overlapping wound with fine mica tip, the actual number of layers is proportional to the voltage which forms the basic structure of the main insulation over the whole length of the bars and coils. That is slot portion and end winding portion. The mica tape is thermally stable up to 500 degrees centigrade, non-inflammable, non-flammable and chemically inert material, which has a high porosity that making it easier to impregnate. Process of making stator winding insulation is framed by applying different types of vacuum pressure impregnation system or through resin rich or B stage scheme. The basic difference of the schemes are global vacuum pressure impregnation, that is GVPI. It is a process by which a fully wound rot stator or rotor is completely submerged in resin through a combination of dry and wet vacuum and pressure cycles, the resin is assimilated throughout the insulation system. Once thermally processed, the impregnated winding become a monolithic and homogeneous structure. The resulting benefits are one, higher dielectric strength, increased mechanical strength, greater thermal inductivity, superior protection against the ingress of water, chemical, and contaminants. Now, the process when implemented properly is become cost efficient and reliable. The proper global vacuum pressure impregnated winding will have superior characteristics which may support a longer maintenance free lifespan. Operational process of GVPI. Stator or rotor is placed inside the impregnation vessel. The tank that is resin tank within the vessel is securely locked to start the vacuum process. Once the vacuum pressure reaches to 50 millibar, then resin is allowed to enter in the impregnation vessel. One millibar is equal to 0 0.0295 inch mercury. When the unit is completely submerged in resin, a wet vacuum is then created. After completion of wet vacuum, the unit is pressurized at 6 bar or 84 PSI. Once the VPI process is completed, a reverse vacuum is created in the resin tank to empty the impregnation vessel. The impregnated unit is then left to drip pre-curing. Vacuum pressure impregnation, only VPI. The VPI process requires a significant capital investment in specialized system equipment, but the quality and reliability of the resulting product 
make it a superior choice for winding manufacturing over other methods such as global vacuum pressure impregnation that is GVPI or some of the resin rich processes. The VPI process involves four distinct steps. One, the insulated conductor coils or bars are placed into the VPI chamber where each coil or bar is heated to drive off any moisture or volatiles. Then the vessel has pulled to vacuum to drive out any trapped air that might cause pockets or voids. Number three, next class F epoxy resin is injected to saturate and permeate, that is to diffuse through or penetrate the ground insulation, filling oil, all, all sorts of voids and gaps. Finally, the tank is pressurized with nitrogen gas to force the resin into every part of the coil or bar insulation system. After completion of VPI process, each bar or coil is placed in custom machining for a customer's specific requirements and shifted to heated steel dyes to cure epoxy mica insulation and for making exact size and shape to install in the core slot. This process is much more expensive since large vacuum pressure chamber and considerable amount of epoxy resin are necessary. Furthermore, precisely machined steel dies are needed for each of the finished bar or coil size. When the process is precisely implemented, the insulation of bar or coil is more or, more or less become void free, having very low power factor or dielectric dissipation factor, that is 10 delta, which has to be measured for better documentation. This system also has the advantage to have easy removal or replacement of an individual bar or coil. If failed during testing without damaging the core itself. Resin rich or B stage. This insulation system is basically comprised of insulating steps that are already preloaded with epoxy resin. When such type of insulating steps are applied to bars or coils, and with the subsequent heating, the preloaded resin starts to liquefy and flowing all through. And then with pressure and temperature, the insulation is eventually cured. Expensive autoclave is to be arranged for applying the exact pressure to have a desired shape and formation of the bar or coil. Execution and process engineering. To have better sustainability in the hydropower modernization market, the optimum quality and performance standards has to be set with engineering reliability and cost-effective execution during manufacturing of hydropower generators. Design should be met with excellence to provide enhanced mechanical and electrical capabilities on all section of the stator winding, which includes internal components of stator bar, slot section bar surface grounding system, end winding electrical grading, necessary electrical clearance, face connection rings, and electrical characteristics of the insulation. That is long-term resistance to electrical stress. Influence of humidity on insulation system, both stator and rotor can also be highly important to consider. In manufacturing stator winding with insulation of thermal class F, that is 155 degrees centigrade has become highly automated and that should be carefully monitored process to ensure a void free 
high dielectric insulation system. The manufacturing process is taken up with two consecutive stages. One is the first process stage. Vacuum pressure impregnation is the first step when the winding component is subjected to heat and pressure for drying in an autoclave under vacuum. This process phase is done with extra heating, complete removal of moisture and air from the dry taps without resin will have to be ensured, thus improving the quality of the main insulation. After that, the resin is pumped to the impregnation vessel where the coils or bars are impregnated with a very low viscosity resin that fully saturates the mica ground tape. <coughs> Later pressure is increased to about four bar, that is 0 0.4 mega Pascal. By means of injecting nitrogen, one bar is equal to 1.0193 kg per centimeter square. That is one mega Pascal is equal to 10 bar. Second process stage, the next step has to be contribute to have a complete curing of the impregnated resin through controlled heating. The ground wall mica tape contains an accelerator. By heating the accelerator or curing agent, accelerates the polymerization until the complete curing. Mobile molding machines are used to control the shape and size of the finished product. This ensures consistency and repeatability of the process, which is conjunction with the fully controlled impregnation and curing process, giving a homogeneous void-free insulation material. And that also creates the dielectric breakdown strength and service life of the ground wall. These properties are retained even at elevated temperatures and also after thermal aging. The epoxy resin system is the tape is before curing in the B stage, giving a flexible tape with low volatile content. The fully cured insulation is a low dielectric loss, tan delta and high temperature insulation system which is designed for use in class F, that is 155 degree centigrade to stand type insulation rotating machines. B stage epoxy adhesive strip is placed between the two bar stand columns. The transpose bar is then placed in a heat press device that aligns and solidly bonds the strands to one another in the bar section. After pressing, the bars are shaped to exact dimensions as compatible with the slot size and formation in a fully programmable bending machine. Let's stop here, further to be continued at later stage. Thank you for listening the video. Kindly do like, share, and subscribe. Your subscriptions would encourage to post more videos. Also, share your comments or feedbacks inside the dedicated comment section. If you have any suggestions or specific topic you want, then let me know in the comment section, please. Thank you.